بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continue on in our study of the قواعد الكلية أو قواعد الكبرى those principles uh, in قواعد الفقية which are principles that can help us to practice our Islam better and facilitate that and these are qawaid that the fuqaha uh, have deduced from the book and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and we reach the third qaida uh, from amongst those qawaid and this qaida is al-mushakka tajlibu taysiyya uh, that Difficulty is facilitated by ease. And this qaida also, it's also put in another way or in a, a context or in a way in which we can understand it. Inna su'ubata wa ina tasbuhu sababin li tashil. That difficulty. Uh, becomes a reason for ease, meaning that there's difficulty in ibadah, so the shara has ways to facilitate that through ease. And there's lots of evidence to support this qaida and the importance of this principle that when there is a great difficulty, and that means uh, that there's different levels of difficulty that we have to consider, when we are talking about this qaida and when it comes to uh, practicing our religion uh, whether that be something even perhaps related to uh, for example making the shahadatain that for perhaps if someone is in a situation and there is someone threatening to kill them and they are really intending on taking their life if they simply utter the shahada okay they simply say I'm a Muslim or they ex simply say the shahadatain and that Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have made it easy that as long as someone in their heart truly believes in Islam and in that shahadatain that they, it is permissible for them to utter a statement of kufr under those circumstances. Meaning someone is threatened to kill you, to take your life. It is permissible. It's a permissible option for you. Or you can hold and stand your ground and have your life taken. That is uh, also a, an option. But Islam gives you this option. And this falls under this qaida. Al-Mushakka Tajlibu Taysir. Uh, that uh, difficulty facilitates or is facilitated through ease. And some of the adilla from Al-Kitab Al-Aziz uh, is, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab Al-Kareem, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرُ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab Al-Kareem that Allah wants for you ease and he does not want for you difficulty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem la yukallifu Allah nafsan illa wus'aha Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem that Allah does not place a burden on a person greater than they have strength to bear so both of these ayat they show us, or both of these ayahs, they show us and illustrate for us this qaida. They are dalil, they are evidence clearly showing that the maqasid, that the intent of the shara is to make things easy on you, not difficult. That if there is an easy halal way out, then this is what the shara is uh, encouraging you to take. And so we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends ease 
for his servants because he wants his servants to have success and be the muflihun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's many ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, يُرِيدُ Allah أَنْ يُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah wants to make things light upon you or easy upon you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, مَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ and yaj ala alaykum min haraj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem also that Allah does not want to make a difficulty for you. Things that, 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 that cause you difficulty, that are hard for you, that uh, can lead you to the haram and lead you to kufr and things that uh, threaten and take away from your iman. So all of this, all of this evidence is strong evidence to support this Qaeda. And from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as was mentioned in Sahihain in Bukhari and Muslim, from the Hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُمْ مُيَسِّرِينَ وَلَمْ تُبْعِثُمْ مُعَسِّرِينَ uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Verily you were sent to be easy, you know, easy with the people. Well, and you were not sent to be difficult. Uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam also said in another hadith, قال, إن الله تعالى وضع عن أمتي الخطأ والنسيان وما uh, the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith that is in Hakam, Akhrajuhu Hakam fi Mustadrak, from the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, that the Messenger ﷺ said, Verily, Allah the Almighty has excused my nation for that which they do out of uh, a mistake or forgetfulness or what they were what was forced upon them so those nasus illustrate for us again that the muqasid is to be easy with the people that the intent and that this qaida is supported with strong evidence from the quran and the sunnah Another hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam illustrating this, and there is countless, and there are many ayat uh, that, that also uh, are strong evidence for this qaida and where this qaida was deduced from. Uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, as it was mentioned, uh, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, that she mentioned about the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam مَا خَيْرَ مَا خَيْرَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بَيْنَ شَيْئَيْنْ إِلَّا أَخْتَارَ أَيْسَرَهُمَا مَا لَمْ يُكُنْ إِثْمًا The Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith that is متفقون عليه in Bukhari and Muslim uh, oh, uh, Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها she mentioned this about the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم in a narration that's in Bukhari and Muslim she said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not choose uh, if he had the choice between two things. Then he would take the easy from amongst those two choices as long as it was not sinful. And again, what does that do? That affirms for us this Qaeda that this is a principle deduced from the Shara and how we should practice our Islam. That we should not bring about difficulty for people. We should not put difficulty upon ourselves. That doesn't mean we're lackadaisical and we're lazy. There's no ifrat and there's no tafrit. There's no being uh, extreme and there's no being, as they say, mumayr or, or leaving off the responsibilities and, and being lackadaisical with regards to our duties and uh, our, ibad, uh, our ibadah.
From the types of mushakka or the types of difficulty that one may experience, uh, the difficulty is from is of uh, different degrees. Of course, we don't say someone who, you know, perhaps their nose is running, and you know they have difficulty, and they would use this as an excuse to not attend the prayer. That would not be excusable. That is not. Uh, a mushakka, even though there might be a bit of difficulty, but that is not one that really impairs their ibadah, that really impairs their worship. So we have to understand that mushakka, that it has different levels. And from the levels that the scholars mention, we're just going to mention two. We're going to mention uh, the mushakka fi fil hadud al adiyah. Al -adiyya. This is the mushakka, which is uh, to the extent which is kind of a regular difficulty that people experience. For example, having to make uh, wudu with cold water or uh, getting up for the prayer and leaving, you know, uh, you know, early in the morning or whatever the case may be, that this is within the hadood uh, al adiya This is from regular difficulty that everyone may experience. It's not something that is going to uh, impair your ibadah. It's not going to uh, make a sup super difficult for you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and cause you harm to your body or your soul or anything uh, that the Sharia protects. And uh, the other type of difficulty, the mashakka that we're concerned with under this qaida, is the mashakka that is, you know, mashakka. Alima, you know, to mashakka that reaches a great level. For example, someone who uh, is in an extremely cold climate, someone in the, you know, our brothers and sisters in Alaska or in Iceland or in many different places around the world where the climate is very extreme. Sometimes it's extremely cold. And then in some places, like we have here, where it's extreme, it can become extremely severe temperatures. So under those circumstances, where it's extremely cold, maybe there will actually be harm by making the wudu, for example, or a person needs to make ghusl from Janaba, and it is so cold in some places that you actually would have ice, your, your, your eyelids freeze together. This is what I've heard about some of the temperatures, for example, just in Toronto and, and so forth in Canada. So it lets us know that, you know, there are severe circumstances and conditions. So under those circumstances that a person it would be who normally would be responsible to make wudu or ghusl under those circumstances where it's extreme mushakka then and you know it's going to cause them some harm and that falls onto another qaida that we're going to get to in our next lesson which is uh, from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu there's no harm and there's no reciprocating harm and we'll talk about that in depth ta'ala. but if there is this great difficulty from this cold, the severe weather then the person can make tayammum so that is the uh, mushakka that we're really concerned with when we're talking about this qaida and there are various r ways that the sharia makes takhfif or ease uh, for people, uh, and there's so many countless examples, but we're just going to talk about, just mention five uh, general scenarios that the fuqaha mention when, with regards to a takhfif, or making things easy, and that goes back to the, the qaida itself. And the first is safar, is when a person is traveling. So when a person is traveling, we know that they can make uh, they can shorten and combine their prayer as a musafir. And this is from takhfif. This is from making it easy upon the musafir. And another reason for takhfif is marad, is sickness. When a person is extremely sick, we know that they have, uh, that it's permissible for them to uh, combine their, their prayers. Uh, also, there is also the third uh, reason for this takhfif, uh, iqra, as we mentioned, and we mentioned this in the beginning, that iqra, when a person is being forced, so if a person, someone comes to you, they have a gun to your head, and they say, hey, listen, you uh, 
you better not be a Muslim. If you tell me, are you a Muslim or not? And you say, no, I'm not, because you want to save your life. You know that this evil person is going to take your life. It's permissible for you as long as you are mutmain, you are comforted in your heart with iman. That you're, you're a believer. You believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. You believe in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of following Kitabi wa Sunnah. But however, for the sake of preventing this greater harm, it, the shara has made it permissible for you to say, you know, no, I'm not a Muslim. Or, uh, you, know, you know, I don't know what you're talking about, whatever the case may be, but knowing full well in your heart and believing without compromising your iman. So that is also takhfif, and that's from the one of the, the reasons of ikra, and the fuqaha uh, speak about that extensively as well. The fifth uh, reason is a jahl, is ignorance, okay? So also ignorance can be a reason for takhfif. We're going to talk about just some quick scenarios just to give us a, a little bit of clarity before we uh, finish with regards to this Qaeda. One way where we can see this Qaeda uh, being implemented is, uh, and especially with regards to Dawa for the for the Dua, those people calling to Allah wa Jal, that there's Tadaraj fi Dawa nas wa ta'limihim wa ta'limihum. And this is part of the Taysir. This is part of the ease. Meaning that when you teach as a da'i or as someone, uh, you know, a, a teacher or as a uh, sheikh, whatever position that the person is in, but they're teaching the general Muslims that you teach people in stages and you teach people in accordance with their level. So, for example, Unfortunately, what we see, for example, a lot of the du'a to takfir, you see that they begin the people with issues, major masail, you know, getting them very engrossed in issues of takfir. This one is not a Muslim for this reason. These, you know, they're making uh, tabdil of the shahr, they're doing this, they're doing that. They're, they're not making tadaraj. They're not following the menhaj of the Rabbaniyun. They're not following what the, the scholars and who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised in the Quran, the Rabbaniyun. And uh, those, those scholars that begin the people and they teach them. And that's the method of the Prophet Wasallam. He began his Sahaba, رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين, and his, you know, and his teaching to them and teaching to the people with Tawheed. He began just with teaching Tawheed, strengthening their Iman, and then the other, and, and building up their Iman for 10 years. Then... Moving on to other Messiah and other issues and other practices in Islam. So that shows us that that is the asl is to daraj. And that is from takhfif, that is from ease. Uh, you know, so the, the origin of the way that we should be conducting ourselves when teaching is teaching, is building the people, teaching the people in stages. Okay, and building them and helping them build their iman and build themselves. And again, I've got to say this as I, I see some of the new, some of the brothers who are out there giving dawah now, when uh, some of the uh, mashayikh that we have in the West, for example, like uh, Sheikh Tahir uh, Wyatt, that this is what these guys are doing. They're beginning, they're beginning the people, you know really breaking down things instead of, you know, giving the people in their language that they understand. Breaking it down and raising them up. So that's what the Tao is meant to do. You're meant to raise communities, not to make the people confused and, and you know, you got the people busy with Jarrah and Ta'deel and they don't even know Surah Al-Fatiha. That's not the way the Tao of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. That's not the way of the ulama, and more importantly, that's not the way of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Another example of what, which we can see is this takhfif, as we mentioned, and this is takhfif with regards, uh, you know, making things easy with regards to the prayer. So, for example, the person who's going to be the imam, or the person who's in a position of being an imam in a community, that they should know those people and know the condition of the people who are praying with them. For example, if you have a congregation that is mainly elderly people and, 
you know, that they, uh, some of them, they have a, you know, health issues, they can't make sujood, they, they're in, praying in chairs, things like this. You are, you need to be aware so that maybe you do not lengthen the prayer and cause them, what? Mushakka. Cause them great difficulty. Why? Going back to this qaida, al-mushakka tejlibu taysir, that this difficulty is facilitated by ease. So you want to be following that qaida, which is mustanid in a dalil, is it comes from the dalil of the Quran and the Sunnah, that you are raising the people and you're taking in consideration their their st status. And that is just one of the examples, and that is also supported by a hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam to make easy on the, the people that, you know, are praying behind you. The imam should, or another scenario and that the scholars often mention is, for example, uh, and you have that in Muslim lands especially, is you have people who, uh, you know, the, there might be a masjid right next to the, to the souk, to the marketplace or to the mall or whatever. So that means many of the people in their praying are also owners of shops and workers in those shops. And so the imam needs to be aware, and you find this a lot of times, you find that they're not making the prayer very long. They make it easy for them so that they can get back to their, and open up their businesses and continue on conducting their business until the next prayer. So you find that this uh, is being practiced with alhamd for a lot of the people. This is not taksir. Don't think of this, ta this is taysir, not taksir. So meaning that this is ease, not uh, shortcoming. This is not a shortcoming. This is actually following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Minhaj Rabbaniyun is to make it easy upon the people. Another last scenario I want to mention, and we kind of touched on it already, and that is, for example, that's also following falling under this qaida, and that is that you teach uh, and, and deal with the, the people uh, in accordance with with their their status and using language that they understand. So this is also from Taysir, that you don't wanna, if, if you know that you're going to be dealing with a, a population that generally is not a highly educated population, they are a, a, a very, a working class population, then you are going to address them differently than compared to a congregation that is full of lawyers and doctors and software engineers. That they are going to have a different level that you address them. And that is from Hikmah, but that is but we don't want to become arrogant. And I've seen some examples where certain communities, I can recall attending a Jumwa, and they were addressing the this wealthy community, because it was a, a community that's predominantly Sufi. Uh, a big Jamaat Tablik uh, masjid and community with a lot of wealth, many s software engineers, very well educated and and wealthy uh, people. So this imam or this person who was given the khutbah, he addressed the people in the language and the asloob that they understand. And I understand that. But I did hear him say some things that were almost belittling to other communities. Like, oh, you shop it there. I know you wouldn't shop there. You know, this kind of thing, which I thought was out of place. But the point is, is that you want to address the people in accordance with their level that they can understand because that way you're re uh, reaching them with the message and you want to uh, you know, address them with hikmah and wisdom and ease, make it easy for them to understand. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.